I'm Annabelle. And I'm Eddie. And we're here in Aberystwyth, Wales. And you're watching What, what I'm, I'm Doing, doing right, right Now. I have good news. I got a new phone. It's a breath of fresh cellular service. But before I can finish setting it up, I gotta go with Stefan to do a SciShow workshop upstairs on the radar track. Are you ready? Oh, that's a little blown out. Do you want some more? No, I feel bad because I gave them to you, but I wanted. Yeah, have some. Do you want some more? Oh my, there's tables in here. It's tabley. Ooh. Kelsey found a dog. What's up, dude? Hey, dude. <laughs> I didn't even land the this game. Broken. You hear about that Rob Scallon guy? He's kind of a jerk. He's a real jerk. Yeah. Oh, hey! Oh. How are you doing, Rob this Scallon? This is awkward. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> so are we gonna just continue on camera? I, I guess so. All right. Well, then I can't reveal to you my secrets. I was gonna. Reveal. Oh. Uh, tell me your secrets, Rob Scallon. People made these trying to get in. Yeah, we have a little. We have a little cemetery of all the. All How the many? Oh my God! You had to make. Yeah, a lot of them are laminated. Some of them are peeling apart or smudged. The size, uh, yeah. the color, flapping around too much. These um, are too yellow, like too too light yellow. Yeah. How did you notice so they, this one? This one's a real one. <laughs> oh. This one's mine. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were showing me all the fake ones <laughs> like, you found. This I was like, is clearly because no. there's no one's These are all fake. Yeah. Someone gave them one to copy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. The way that these letters don't line up, the D sticks oh, in. Oh no no no! Look at this. That's Look too this. faded. That's photoshopped. Huh. Like that's really? not the same. You know, that's gotta fade. No way. Uh, Interesting. Maybe they took a photo of and it look, and then they went over. There's eighth annual. We're missing eighth annual over here. This has been a fascinating and then, again, dissection. It's the same on both sides. Yeah, oh, they so don't have was, the terms so of service. Not, oh. VidCon is now over, and everybody's tearing down all the booths, rolling up the carpet. Pretty crazy because it's it's only been a few hours, and and so much of this has already been disassembled. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. VidCon is going away. See you next year. We're having what I guess is now our annual uh, pizza party in the parking lot of the Marriott. There's Steve. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hey. hey! Hey! Happy VidCon. Was it your best VidCon ever, was, Gavi? It was my only VidCon ever. Tabith has come to an end. Thus, Gavi is uh, preparing, I, I assume this ritual has a name. Called Havdalah. Havdalah. Which means differentiating between the holy of Sabbath and the not holy of the person. Yeah. <laughs> I can't smell it. Basically, I just made a blessing over the wine. I made a blessing to smell the good smells. It's my big blessing for the fire. And like, I'm supposed to like notice it. I think that you like this usually. No, continue. That was. <laughs> I usually don't do it out of a bottle. So, so with that, the Sabbath has ended? Officially, yes. Okay. Hey! Well, uh, I guess VidCon's over. I don't really feel like I went to VidCon, though. I spent so much time dealing with things external to this event that my mind was never really here. In it. For the last handful of years, every year at VidCon, I've had the thought, I wonder how much longer they're going to continue to invite me back as a featured creator. This year felt very much like I'm going to be really surprised if next year I'm invited back as a featured creator. The demographics this year just felt so far removed from where I feel my audience is. My audience has been getting older over time, obviously. Most of the people that I saw wandering around the expo hall, and a lot of the people even on the creator track, they seem younger than my 
audience is now, noticeably younger. Like when I went to go do my signing line, we checked in and there were, I don't know, actually maybe 12 people in line. And it doesn't make me feel bad from the standpoint of like, oh, nobody likes me, but it just seems like looking around at the other lines nearby that are like really full, that have 250 people per creator all the way down, it makes me feel like I don't have a lot of value anymore to offer VidCon. There's no reason for them to pay to have me be a featured creator if I can't bring in ticket sales. I would say that this is probably going to go down as my least enjoyable VidCon from the community engagement side, because there were so few people here that I could connect with who were a part of my audience. Even the, uh, the SciShow workshop that we did earlier today, it felt like the turnout for that was much lower than it was last year. And so I wonder why that is. Are the demographics of VidCon changing? Are we just aging out of the kind of content that is going to be popular at VidCon? I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. If it makes you feel any better, I'm 21 and I felt very old there. So I don't think it's you. I think it's VidCon. Even though from the community engagement angle, I do feel like this was my least favorite VidCon. In addition to what I was talking about earlier in feeling like mentally I wasn't really at this conference. I was too busy thinking about like phones being stolen or like business stuff related to cinema. From a business networking angle, this was by far the most successful VidCon that we've had because of the amount of networking that Todd and Abby and Michael Morgan were doing with all of the other businesses here. We're walking away with a ton of new relationships and business leads that could potentially bring Cinema Studios much more business over the coming years. So that part is very exciting. And because that was the most successful part of this conference. It's making me think maybe we should be looking at going to other conferences that are aimed more toward uh, industry professionals. Like uh, there's NAB show in April every year. The NAM show I think happens at the same convention center. It's like all audio related stuff. So maybe it's worth trying to get a booth set up at one of those places just for the networking. But also this has made me start thinking about how can I pivot now in my career as a public figure, not as a business person, but like as a public figure, to make it worth VidCon's money to invite me back next year? What can I do to increase my, I guess f there's no better word for it than, than fame, with the demographic of people who come to VidCon. Part of what Todd and Michael Morgan and I were talking about in the parking lot after we finished eating pizza was um, we've been focusing a lot on the kind of content that if we're comparing it to food, I would compare to uh, the like nourishing main course. There's a lot of content out there on the internet that is like candy or snack food, stuff that's not very filling, but it's like colorful and shiny and sugar-filled and easy to consume. And that's just not what we've put a lot of effort into. And I'm wondering if we need to mix it up a bit so that we have a bit of that more snack food type stuff as an appetizer and the heavier, more uh, crafted material as the main course. So something to get people's attention and then bring them into what we're doing and then something to like really engage them and make them think and ask questions about themselves and the world around them. So I'm not quite sure what all of that looks like yet, but that's the kind of stuff that's bubbling around in my brain right now. Did you fall asleep? Kelsey, I think you mm -hmm. fell asleep. <laughs> hmm. I guess that's a sign that uh, I should stop talking. Mm, I like listening to you talk. My words are so boring that it's putting you to sleep. No, so soothing. <laughs> like today at your SciShow panel, I, the entire time listening to you talk, I was like, wow, 
Michael would make an amazing teacher. One, the way you explain things. You're very good with your words. You sound very intelligent when you speak, and you're very well-spoken. Not only that, but the cadence of how you speak and how you explain things flows very smoothly into the ears of people listening. <laughs> it's like some good ear soup. It just pours right in. That sounds hella gross. <laughs> some tasty ear soup to I deliver. Need, I need you to make me a promise. <laughs> what? For the rest of our lives, yeah. never use the phrase ear soup. Ear soup. <laughs> anyway, are you ready for Disneyland tomorrow? No, because it opens two hours earlier than I thought it did. It opens at 8. I thought it opened at 10. 8 a.m. You just told me this and I had to reset all of my alarms. What time is it? And I just got two hours crankier. On the radio, I heard them say, Uh, can we get a private ride for Casey Neistat, please? And the person in the car was like, Yeah, I have everyone getting out of the car right now. You can bring them over. So Casey Neistat requested a personal private ride. Didn't want to ride with the other YouTubers, I guess. Which was strange, because I've seen him in the the lobby several times. So I was like, oh, well, if he's cool with just sitting in a lobby with lots of random people he doesn't know, why does he need a private ride? I think this is a good example of a situation where it's really easy to jump to a particular conclusion. Oh, what am I jumping to? Like, just assuming, like, maybe there's some kind of diva-esque thing going on. Like, maybe oh. it's a situation where, like, he's not staying at the Hyatt, so maybe... They have a special deal where they're driving him straight to the airport afterwards. Like, we just have no idea. There was a, a day, I don't know, a month ago, where I was trying to park at the Cinema Studios office, and all of the parking spots in the back were full, but I needed to run in to do something really quickly. So there was, like, this loading zone area. It's not a parking spot, but I just pulled in there real quick and I was like, oh, I'll just move my car in, you know, 30 minutes when I'm done. So I went inside and then by the time I came out, someone had written a note and put it on the windshield of my car calling me a douchebag for parking there. And <gasps> you in, never told me about this. In my head, I was like, all right, fine, whatever. But at the same time, I was also thinking, like, there's a uh, a therapist's office right next to us. So, like, what if it had been a situation where, like, someone who struggles with depression and suicide was late for their appointment at the therapist's office and there was no spot left, so they just parked there because they needed to get to their appointment and they had a, you know, really rough conversation and they came out to find this kind of mean note on their windshield, you assume that something is happening one way and you just never know. Like, when I see people driving all crazy on the freeway, probably they're just being impatient or being a sort of dickish driver or whatever, but like, that very small chance that someone is like trying to rush their significant other to the hospital or doing something actually very important, I, I try not to get upset or annoyed because you just never know what the situation is going to be. That was a really long tangent we went on. I wasn't upset or annoyed. I was just stating a fact that Casey Neistat asked for a private ride. The succinct version of my response is, and we have no idea why. I guess. We should mm -hmm. go to sleep. Yeah, we gotta be up early, don't we? Hey, Michael. Mm hmm Are they coming to Disneyland with us? Yeah. Oh. Well then, uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.